Good morning friends and welcome to another video. As per this recording, I have been living on the paradise island of Bali for almost two months now. And you know what this means? This means it's time to talk through how much it costs to live in Bali for one month. So if you're down the rabbit hole and you've been watching a lot of these videos, then my subgenres will be very similar to other videos I'm gonna go ahead and assume. But in this video, I'm gonna be talking about accommodation, transport, food, essentials and non-essentials and all the prices mentioned in this video will be from my own personal experience of living in Chenggu and some things just may be a little bit more expensive or a little bit cheaper in different areas of the island the current conversion rate between pound sterling and Indonesia rupiah is currently about one pound to 19,000 rupiah so to make that easier for me I'm gonna round that up to 20,000 rupiah which means one pound equals 20,000 rupiah and that should make it a bit easier for everyone to understand and a little bit easier to convert. Bear in mind, this video is going to be talking about the cost of me living in Bali for one month, using my first month as a basis, but also talking about what my monthly cost will be as well, regularly carrying on in the future. So let's go ahead and get on with it. So when it comes to accommodation here in Bali, the price can vary massively. You could probably go as cheap as about three to five pound per night in a dorm room in a hostel. And the top end can go pretty much as high as you like, not stopping until it's in the thousands of dollars per month for a private villa. But if you decide to go on the cheap, cheap side, just bear in mind that you might have dusty rooms, cold showers and broken and cheap furniture. So when we arrived on the island, we actually found somewhere to stay for a week and we only paid for the week up front so that it gave us time to drive around and look at other places to live to make sure that the place we picked looked like it did on the photos. Unfortunately in Bali, it happens quite a lot that people book a place to stay and when they turn up, it looks nothing like the images and it's actually a lot worse condition than what they thought it was gonna be. So I definitely recommend just booking a place for maybe like three to seven days while you go around and have a look at other areas and other places, you might find somewhere better to live. We spent an entire day riding around checking out guest houses that range from anywhere between 150 pounds per month to 500 pounds per month. And eventually we settled on a place where we are staying now and that's called Genga Guest House in Changu and we are renting a queen size room with an ensuite. We picked this place specifically because it has a pool the kitchen is clean which in cheaper accommodations we looked in it was not and there are two dogs that live here which is a bonus in our eyes and since moving in we also discovered that the family are really nice we get our room cleaned every two days and fresh towels and linen every four days all in all this guest house sets us back about five million per month which is around 260 pounds per month in time it would be nice if I was in a position to sort of rent my own space my own villa where I could have multiple rooms and have an office and a bedroom separate but for now I'm quite content here and I think I'm going to stay here for quite a while. It comes to no surprise that eating out in Bali is incredibly cheap. Originally, when we scouted out our guest house, we wanted to make sure we had a place with a nice kitchen so that we could go to the supermarket, buy our own food and cook our own food. However, we quickly discovered, as I'm sure everyone else did, after our first supermarket shop, that it's actually a lot cheaper to eat out anyway. When it comes to eating out, it is very possible to eat healthy if you want to. There are loads of healthy food-based restaurants and you, most places have a healthy option as well. But by the nature of Indonesian cuisine, the food here is quite often fried and a lot of Indonesian dishes will include things like fried vegetables, fried rice, fried noodles. So you're probably going to end up consuming a lot of oil. In terms of prices, we actually decided to stick to a few different places for breakfast. There's a lovely place across the road I go to quite often where I could get an avocado on toast with a juice for around 40,000 ideas. Another one of my favorite breakfast places is Rorong Jabba down the road, but I can grab an omelette and a coke for 40,000. You can get a fruit platter for 17,000 idea. And I'm telling you, this is the best omelette that I have ever had in Indonesia. A lot of the times though, we do skip breakfast and we end up going straight to these places for lunch instead. Speaking of lunch, we mostly stick to Rorong Jabba, the same place I just mentioned, or we go to Rorong Local, which is the Rorong or restaurant that's located literally in front of our guest house. We don't have to walk far at all. The buffet options in the Rorongs here offer a very versatile price and you can get a bigger or smaller dish depending on how hungry you are. Whenever I go for this buffet option, it probably costs me on average between 30 and 50,000 IDR for a food and drink combination. Some dinners though, if we're feeling fancy or we don't fancy we're wrong or we're eating out with friends, we'll go on a little bit on the more expensive side. But on average, it usually costs around 100,000 per person each time we go. And we tend to do this maybe twice a week whenever we feel like it. So taking all that into account, if we skip breakfast five times a week, stick mostly to what we know and the we're wrongs, and maybe splash out twice a week for dinner, then we spend around 500,000 IDR per week, which is obviously two million per month. 
as you may or may not know, it is not recommended to drink from the water here. It will make you incredibly ill. So you need to factor in the cost of water here as well. We actually buy a big 20 litre sort of water dispenser sized bottle of water from the convenience store and we go through about one a week because a 20 litre bottle of water is so cheap at 20,000 RDR or one pound. The cheapest and most popular way to get around Bali, as you know, is by scooter or moped if you're from the UK. Most places give you the option to rent a scooter from days to weeks to months. And obviously the longer you commit to renting, the cheaper it's gonna be. For 125cc Honda Vario, which is probably the most common scooter around here, it's usually around 40 to 60,000 IDR per day or around 300 to 400,000 per week. I had this scooter to start with, but when you need to nip around a lot with two people, it becomes really uncomfortable, it struggles with heels. And this scooter is quite quite narrow and quite skinny and it does really ache your ass after a while. We upgraded to a Yamaha N-Max in our second week here, getting rid of the Honda Vario. It's larger, it has more boot space, it's 155cc instead of 125, which makes it slightly more powerful. It's not overly more powerful, but it is noticeable when you're trying to go up hills or trying to pull away fast. Our scooter costs us 1.2 million or around 60 pounds per month to rent. We fill it up with fuel maybe once or twice a week, which every time is around 40,000 to 50,000 IDR. For the sake of this video, I'm just gonna say that we filled it up six times a month, so that's around 300,000 IDR. We also spent 150,000 IDR each this month on helmets with visors that uh, stop the bugs from hitting you in the face and stop your eyes from drying out when you're going down the main roads. If you're worried about riding a scooter for the first time, it is possible to buy lessons for around 150,000 IDR or about £7.50. And this should teach you the basics and help smooth out those nerves about going into the Asian traffic. Other forms of transport could be getting a grab car or a Gojek car or bike, which we have done once or twice to move all of our belongings from one place to another. And this cost us around 22,000 IDR, so not a lot to move from our first place into the place that we're living now. There are also a lot of Balinese drivers that will offer to chauffeur you around the islands as well, if that's what you want to do. They're not overly expensive, but they are a lot more expensive than having your own scooter or getting a grab taxi. But honestly, I would just recommend renting your own scooter while you're here. It is by far the simplest and most convenient way of getting around. In this section of the video, I'm going to be talking about the miscellaneous costs that are essential to everyday life. It is incredibly uncommon for a guest house or villa in Bali to have its own washing facility, so the chances are you're going to probably want to take a wash bag full of your dirty clothes to the local laundrette. Again, the price of laundry changes depending on where you go and you could pay anywhere between 5,000 per kilogram or 30,000 per kilogram. We actually pay very little for our laundry. We go to a place called Laundry Hub and they have a special COVID promotion at the moment where it's only 5,000 IDR per kilogram with a minimum of three kilograms each time. We usually take around four kilograms of laundry, so that's around 20,000 IDR every time we take it and we probably do our laundry four to six times a month. We have tried another place as well that was 15,000 per kilogram, hoping that, that maybe it would wash better or that it would come back smelling nicer. But actually they do the same job whether you go to a 5,000 per kilogram laundry place or a 15,000 thousand kilogram per laundry place so you know we don't need feel the need to splash out all that much but I know from past experiences if you go to a place like the Gilly Islands it actually ramps up in price it could be anywhere from 30 to 50 thousand because you're on an island and you don't have an option but to pay it. Next we'll tackle sim cards. I decided to go with Telcom Cell which is actually a pain in the ass to set up and a little bit more expensive than the other brands but it does have the best coverage on the island and it's really easy to top up using the app. You don't have to go out and get a new SIM card every time you want to top up or you don't have to go to the little SIM card shops that they find here to do that. I went to the Telcom Cell shop in the shopping center and I pay 235,000 IDR for a SIM that has 35 gigabyte of local internet because here in Indonesia, it tells you it's 35 gigabyte but it splits it between local and national. Local can be used in Bali and national gets used across Indonesia. And in this was further broken down into 25 gigabytes of internet and 10 gigabytes of multimedia but I'm not sure what that is. I also got three gigabytes of national coverage as well. I also paid a premium for this sim card which you always pay when you get your first sim card with Telcom Cell and then the top-ups after that are actually quite cheaper than the initial 
registration of the SIM card. I think topping up on the app would cost me about 150,000 IDR for the same internet plan as I paid when I first bought the SIM card. There are also other providers such as SmartFriend, which Robin is with, or XL or IC3 Freedom. And these do tend to be slightly cheaper as Robin only paid 90,000 for her SIM card and she got 19 gigabytes of internet. But as I said, the coverage isn't supposed to be as good as Telcom Cell. Lastly, I have always and I will always get a haircut once a month. Here in Bali, I paid 150,000 to get that fresh barnet, but there are places you can actually get it a lot cheaper and obviously there are more expensive places as well. But there isn't really much else to say on that. That's just why. So, non-essential costs are the ones that sort of encompass leisure and activities. Some may argue they're not necessities, but it is good to go out and have fun and have hobbies and see people and all of that jazz, otherwise you're gonna get bored. The first thing I've been trying to do more of recently is actually surfing. Surfing is actually really inexpensive here in Bali and the rent of a board is around 50,000 IDR or about £2.50 for around a two to three hour window, which I think isn't really bad at all. I want to be surfing around twice a week, which brings the cost of surfing to about 100 150,000 per week, but we'll see how that goes in the future. So this month, you may have seen one of my last videos, we decided to take a trip over east, and this was to see some temples and go to the Hangan Suite. It wasn't overly expensive and probably cost us 50,000 in fuel, 150,000 for the room, 150,000 in entry fees to the temples, and around 40,000 in food and water. To be honest, I think it was pretty cheap for an overnight stay. We got there around sunset on the first day and then we left around midday on the next day, so we didn't spend too much on food. I think it was pretty reasonable, to be honest. The other week I also brought myself a rash top for surfing. I was wearing a short sleeve shirt and while I was doing that, I was getting terrible rashes down my forearms. I looked hard, but I actually couldn't find a cheap rash top anywhere, so I ended up paying around 600,000 IDR for mine. But I think the amount that I'm going to be surfing, I think it was worth the price. I also brought a new pair of sunglasses because my old ones were like six years old and incredibly scratched up and these cost me 175,000 IDR. I brought two vest tops from a shop for 200,000 because I had a sale on where all items were 100,000 each. And we had one big night out with some friends this month at the local brewery called Black Sand Brewery. It's a great place if you like craft beer and we spent around 800,000 there that night, so around 400,000 per person on some tasters and then a couple of pints afterwards. We don't do this very often, which is why I've put this in the non-essential section because I don't think it belongs in the food section because I haven't done it since um, and it is definitely a one-off activity. And that pretty much sums up the costs of everything in my first month in Bali. So this is a bit you've all been waiting for. Let's tally up all the costs and I can let you know how much my first month in Bali cost me. For accommodation, I spent 5 million this month. For my scooter rental, 1.2 million, 150,000 in fuel, 150,000 on a helmet and 10,000 on a grab taxi. 500,000 on food, 60,000 on laundry, 235,000 for my SIM card, 150,000 on a haircut, around probably 400 to 450,000 on surfing, 200,000 on my trip out east, 600,000 on a surfing rush top, 200,000 on some vest tops, 175,000 on some sunglasses, and that brings our total to, drum roll please, 9,485,000 IDR or 492 pounds 62 in total. This is probably a tad on the higher side because of the non-essential stuff that I've been buying this month while I've been settling into Bali. So next month will probably be cheaper and more like around 400 to 450 pounds for the month. This actually surprised me because when I was researching it, I thought it was gonna cost me around like 500 pounds plus per month. So I'm actually very happy for the price that I have spent. And I'm glad to know that I'm already below that. Yay. So as you can tell, it's incredibly cheap to live here in Bali. And that is why I have chosen this beautiful island to be my home while I attempt to become a full-time creative. And if I had stayed in my apartment I was living in, this probably would have been closer to sort of 1,100 to 1,300 pounds per month. If you're looking to come to Bali as a remote worker, then I definitely recommend it. There is a massive community of digital nomads here and a lot of people are trying to do the same thing that I'm sure that you're trying to do. I have made a video that outlines the process of how you can get to Bali, so if this is something that interests you, I definitely recommend you go and watch that. I'll leave it linked in the description below and up above here. However, just bear in mind that it has changed a bit since I posted that video and right now people from I think 13 countries can't enter Indonesia, including the UK, Denmark and Norway. And if you can enter, then the quarantine is currently sitting at 14 days, which is a lot longer than what I did. But hopefully this will start to go down very soon. Feel free to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. 
and reach out with any questions that you have. I'm always happy to answer questions. And it would really help me out massively if you gave this video a like, if you subscribe to the channel for more videos, and if you leave a comment below, I always answer every single comment. I'll be making barley content every week, so make sure you're subscribed for that. And with all that said, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again in the next one. Peace.